All right, this is just a quick video show you how I modify my Duke number no. one coil springs for water trapping. Six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. All right, let's get started. Um, the first thing I do right out of the box. Look the trap over. You want to make sure your J hooks are all the way closed, which they are on this one. If not, you can just uh, preset the vice grips and give it a clamp, or you can use a J hook pair of pliers, which would be a little bit more efficient. If I were trapping on land for raccoons with these traps, I would cut this chain in the middle and put in another swivel. For water trapping, this swivel, which also acts as a drowner, and this swivel are plenty. Um, the first thing I do, or second thing I do, is check the dog for play. You can see this one has a lot of play in it. And uh, this is more important. What this will do is, if it's all the way back and the pan starts going down, we'll actually put creep into the pan. So. I preset a pair of vice grips um, by doing the first trap like micro adjustments at a time till I get it where I want it and then I lock them in. So one good squeeze and what you want is to squeeze this down just before it starts to bind. Um, if you overdo it don't worry about it you can drive a nail or a screwdriver in there and open it back up. But this here just took a lot of that play away. Look, it barely wiggles at all. So that will stop the creep. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, my pan tension. These come from the factory real tight. You can see it uh, stays up on its own. You should have a nut driver, but today I just got a pair of uh, needle nose. These nuts aren't really tight. And I'll set the pan up a little bit and then tweak this nut till it drops on its own. You don't want it too loose, just enough for it to drop on its own. Right there. See, and uh, that will create a little bit of side wiggle, but don't worry because when you boil them and wax them, the wax will get in there and work as a lubricant, but it also works as a shim and it will stop that side. Then I check the pan to see if it's flat to the trap. And this must have been a bad day at the factory because all these seem to be leaning towards the right. So I'll just grab that with my pliers, give it a little cheap, a little tweak to the left. There. Now what I want to check is my distance between the dog and the notch here to make sure the trap will go off and to make sure my pan lays level. So I'll actually set the trap. No big deal. This one doesn't look too bad. That's pretty flat but it's also uh, barely in the notch. I like it just a hair deeper than that, so I'll go ahead and snap it. Take my preset adjustables and just tweak this up just a little bit. It doesn't take much. You don't want to overdo it or the pan won't drop. It should just clear it. Yeah, that looks much better. Pan nice and flat. It's straight. We're good to go on that. That's all it takes is a couple simple adjustments. Double check everything. Now in states where you gotta tag them, want to make sure your nameplate goes on there. In my state, it has to be legible. So don't cheap out. Buy the good copper ones, they put a good stamp in them. Um, you get the 
the ones you just scratch your initials into or your driver's license number into, they wear out pretty quick. And technically, if they can't read them, you're going to get a ticket. And I always wrap them around my chain, letter side in, so if the animal chews on it, it won't scratch all the letters. And if the DNR asks me, I can unfold that and he can read the numbers on it. So the last thing to do is uh, open up the jaws. I drop the swivel with the J-hook in the jaws. That way it gives you a little separation. So when you boil them, the water can get in there and clean out all your stuff. Uh, on the boiling, I just boil them in fresh water. A couple of drops of dish soap or laundry soap, not much. And it will... Uh, Pull all the grime and grunge off them, and uh, they're ready to throw out in the yard and let get a little coat of rust so I can dye them. Um, a helpful hint, after you boil your traps, put the garden hose in the water and actually flood the scum off the surface. Because if you just dump the water out of your pan, all that scum and dirt and oil will go back in there and recoat your traps and then you're starting from zero. So go ahead and flood it and let it run over the side until the water's clear. Then you can dump them out, throw them in the yard, let them rust up, and you're ready for dying. Alright, I hope this helps. Take care. Happy trapping. Play nice.